Hi, I'm David Huboy. Welcome to Going Green TV. This show is sponsored by the San Benito County Chamber of Commerce. And coming from the Green Business Committee, our mission is to promote economic vitality along with environmental sustainability for future generations. On our show, the first segment, we'll, we will be interviewing City Councilman and Supervisor, Board of Supervisor candidate Victor Gomez. In the second segment, we will have a debate on the anti-fracking initiative, and we will have CEO of Citadel Exploration, Armand Nahabedian, and San Benito Rising organizer, Andy Shaw Koran. So, Victor, welcome on our show. Yeah, thank you, David. I appreciate you uh, having me here today. Are you a fan of our show? I am, absolutely. Okay, great. Absolutely. All right, that's as another a, one. <laughs> yeah, as a, as a former board member and chairman of the mm -hmm. uh, San Benito County Chamber of Commerce, uh, it's uh, great that you have this show uh, available for the community. Oh, you're very welcome. It's great to have on, you on the show. And a little background about Victor is that you were born and raised in Hollister, San Benito High School graduate. And after you got a degree in aviation from Gavlin College with your wife, Anitra, you raised three daughters. You have a, uh, including, uh, along with your Basset Hound, Woody, we can't leave him out, right? <laughs> and you did recently adopt <coughs> another Basset Hound, mm -hmm. Bobby, and uh, you have a cat, Rosie. Yep. Yeah. Now, Victor was elected to the city council in 2008, and he was re-elected in 2012. And he currently serves as District 4 city councilman. Mayor, served as mayor in 2010 and uh, former president of the League of Cities, California Cities, Monterey Bay chapter that represents 18 cities of Monterey, Santa Cruz, and San Benito. And you currently serve as deputy chief of staff to city councilman Johnny Comps. And your duties are crafting innovative solutions to uh, transportation, the environment, land use, and gang prevention. Okay. Yep. Well, we, we came up with a list of questions for you, Victor, and uh, I'd like to talk to you. Uh, first, we'll talk to you about what we're going to talk also on the second segment is about fracking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to read this first question for you and for your response here. Do you feel the voters of San Benito County should decide whether fracking should be banned or altogether, or do you feel that SB4, which will require oil and gas companies to apply for a permit, to conduct fracking, pu publicly dis and publicly disco disclose the fracking chemicals they use, notify neighbors before drilling and monitoring groundwater and air quality, among other requirements, is sufficient enough to protect San Benito County. Yeah, thank you, David. That's a that's a great question, um, and I want to answer that by saying, well, um, you know, first of all, um, I am I'm, I am happy to see that uh, so many key players in the petroleum and in the environmental sector. Um, have come together uh, on a variety of levels. They came together last year um, as the uh, San Benito County Board of Supervisors was looking into this issue. Um, they also came together last year um, and uh, broke down the partisan walls and came together to try to gain a solution to the fracking issues. Uh, personally, you know, I do, uh, when it comes to fracking specifically, um, you know, obviously, uh, water quality and water quantity is important to San Benito County residents. So I think having uh, strict uh, monitoring and regulations on, um, on fracking is important uh, to our residents to make sure that we are kept safe uh, from uh, this type of um, oil uh, exploration. And uh, personally, you know, I believe that, um, you know, SB4 uh, was uh, a step in the right direction uh, to be able to... Um, address those uh, environmental issues. Um, and it brought a lot of folks together. Uh, locally, um, SB4 uh, uh, had the support of both Assembly Member Luis Alejo, who is a Democrat, mm -hmm. and um, Anthony Canella, who is a Republican. So it's a good example to show that, hey, you know, partisan walls were knocked down and this issue uh, was addressed and obviously was mm -hmm. signed into law by uh, Governor Jerry Brown. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think all of that taken into account um, it would be it would be wise to see uh, SB4 come to fruition mm -hmm. and actually see the results of it. Um, you know, fracking is obviously a very controversial issue um, in San Benito mm -hmm. County and throughout the nation. Um, you know, our dependency on um, you know foreign oil is uh, led to a, a lot of issues. Um, so gaining any kind of dependency uh, from um, uh, or you know resisting that dependency from other countries to provide provide our energy needs. 
um, is important. You know, so um, you know, looking into the possibility of uh, energy uh, exploration, I think is important for a nation that we, we could keep our energy costs under control. Um, you know, there are environmental um, issues with uh, fracking that I am concerned about. As I said earlier, um, water quality and um, you know, water quantity is going to be very important. And just to make sure overall that um, you know we're keeping our community and our residents safe uh, from um, all this activity. Um, so I think SB4, uh, you know, was a good step in that, in that direction. Um, you know, I was approached by folks that are uh, proposing this new ballot measure to, uh, to ban um, uh, multiple types of uh, oil exploration, including hydraulic fracturing. And, um, you know, I think if the ballot measure would have included hydraulic fracturing only, mm -hmm. um, I, think, um, I think it would have helped us, uh, you know, get clear-cut answers to the residents and have them make a, a good decision on whether they want to continue forward with um, banning fracking or not. The problem that I see in the ballot measure and the reason um, I'm not supporting the ballot measure um, is because it also includes um, other type of oil exploration. Um, and uh, that is concerning to me, you know, that um, I think eventually the desire of some folks um, on the other side, on the environmental side, is to completely stop oil exploration completely in San Benito County and probably throughout the state. Um, I don't think that's good, you know, I don't think that's good to be able to, uh, to put a halt on uh, energy exploration, especially if we want to keep our costs, um, our energy costs under control. So, um, I, you know, I think it would be nice to see SB4 move forward and actually see the impacts, the positive impacts it can have. Um, it'll disclose the chemicals that are being mm -hmm. used. It'll have uh, a tremendous amount of oversight um, as well to monitor the uh, environmental impacts um, that it will have on our community. So, um, you know, that would be nice. And, um, but, you know, it is uh, up to the voters, you know, and in November they'll decide mm -hmm. um, if they want to move forward with um, banning uh, this type of uh, fracking and other types of oil exploration um, in San Benito County. Yeah, I, I did sign the initiative, and the reason I signed it is that, you know, I think everyone should be concerned about this. And to get it on the ballot, it puts it in the public forum. So people study it and know the issues. And when they go to the voters' booth in November, they mm -hmm. make an informed decision. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to the uh, conversation that's been going on, uh, the conversation we're going to see today on this show as well, later, later on in the show, and the conversation we'll see now through uh, November. I think it's going to be very important for the voters to uh, be educated on this issue and uh, make the right, uh, what they feel to be the right choice for the, for the community. Great. Okay, let's go on to uh, tourism now. You know, we had recently had the name change uh, of Pinnacles National State Park to a, nas I mean, to a national monument. Uh, from the, excuse me, uh, put that in reverse, National Monument to a National Park. And was tolerated a way to increase tourism in San Benito County. It's been a year since Pinnacles became a national park. Are we seeing increased tourism in the area and uh, business businesses benefit? benefiting from that name change? Today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, David, I think, um, I think overall we are seeing a, a positive impact from it. Um, it has helped. Uh, but, you know, the unfortunate part with um, uh, Pinnacle's National Monument becoming a national park um, is that we didn't grab the bull by the horns and take it. You know, just take control of um, the potential that that name change could have on San Benito County. Um, we um, the name change was supported. It was supported by, obviously, by Congressman Sam Farr, which I'm very thankful that he did that and supported the, uh, the change in, um, in, into a national park. But as a county, you know, we saw what Monterey County did and what they took advantage of. Monterey County took, um, uh, took advantage of the name change um, as San Benito County sat on its hands and didn't do anything about it. So I think uh, San Benito, the San Benito County Board of Supervisors uh, could have been a little bit more aggressive when it came to uh, tourism and marketing um, of the park. I think that would have been essential, and uh, we would maybe even see uh, a change in our local economy because, you know, obviously one of the biggest issues we're dealing with on the county level is um, uh, deteriorating uh, jobs and a deteriorating economy. Mm -hmm. uh, people continue to flee the city every morning to go work, including mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't think it needs to be that way. I think, you know, here speaking on this show about having sustainable communities, um, that's important to an economy to provide jobs, not just right. housing. Housing, obviously, we need we need housing, but provide jobs for those residents that are living um, in the homes in San Benito County 
um, is also very important. So um, I started, actually I started a plan uh, just recently with the city of Hollister to implement a marketing and tourism plan uh, for uh, the city of Hollister. Um, mm -hmm. It was my desire to have the San Benito County Board of Supervisors jump on board. Um, it doesn't sound like they want to do that, um, and I'm kind of disappointed about that. But um, if I am elected, you know, when I'm elected to the Board of Supervisors, um, I plan on uh, putting together a fairly comprehensive uh, marketing and tourism plan uh, for the county. Great. And when you mentioned job, you know, jobs and, you know, lowering our carbon footprint, our collective carbon footprint, having local jobs is so important for our community because we're still kind of a bedroom community. We travel outside of the manufacturing areas in San Jose. So in just in the minute we have remaining, um, you know, what other ways other than promoting tourism do you have or your views for, you know, s stimulating the local economy and establishing jobs for our citizens? Yeah, well, I think one of the areas that we, uh, you know, briefly, one of the areas I believe we need to focus on is the Highway 1 and 1 corridor. Highway 1 and 1 corridor is going to be very important to the, uh, to the future economy of San Benito County. Uh, we have seven plus miles of Highway 101 running through San Benito County between Santa Clara and Monterey County. Uh, it's an extreme potential. I mean, we have 20,000 plus cars that travel that roadway every single day. Um, and they have no reason to get out of their car and spend money in San Benito County. These are folks that are just passing through. And we don't shake them down for any money at all. And I think that's very disappointing. So we need to put together a comprehensive plan when it comes to the 101 corridor to develop it as an economic potential and revenue generator for uh, for our county. Great. Well, Victor, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. And, Absolutely. And it's then my the, pleasure. the words of my architect father, keep up the good work. <laughs> and good luck with your campaign. Yeah, I appreciate that, David. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're back watching Going Green. On this segment, we're going to have a debate between the gentleman on my left here is CEO of Citadel Exploration Inc., Armand Nahabedian. Welcome back on the show, Armand. Thanks a lot for having you, me. Much you're appreciated. Welcome. You're, you're welcome. And San Benito Rising organizer Andy Shaw Coran. Nice to see you, David. Let's all shake Andy. hands at the beginning. Welcome. Nice all to right, see you. All right, great. Thank you. And uh, we're going to talk, have a debate on what's commonly known as the anti fracking initiative. And that is, uh, it bans not only hydraulic fracturing, or so-called fracking, but also cyclic steam injection and acidizing in unincorporated areas of San Benito County, including where drilling has already been started. The initiative also bans oil, all oil and gas drilling in rural residential areas of the county. Now we're going to begin with Andy. Andy, you have three minutes to tell the viewers why this initiative is, is a good initiative and why people should vote for it. Well, I think I'm going to start out with the idea of why our initiative is good in the first place, and then I'll get a little bit more specific. Uh, initiatives were a uh, big part of California's democratic experiment. Um, at the turn of the century, California was locked under the control of Southern Pacific Railroad. They were choosing the candidates in both parties, and uh, we didn't have primaries. We had backroom deals. And pretty much the legislature was a subsidiary of Southern Pacific. And uh, there was a reaction to that. And uh, just over the hill from us in Santa Cruz, the Republican Convention of 1910, uh, Hiram Johnson, who went on to become governor, championed the idea of three changes to our California Constitution that would reinvigorate democracy. And they were the initiative, the referendum, and the recall. And uh, they felt that without that, that it would continue to be a corporate-run state. And so uh, with that change, California shifted out of being Southern Pacific sub subsidiary and began to be the progressive state that we know it to be today. So we embraced the idea of an initiative when we found that the, uh, super, that the supervisors had essentially um, implemented regulations that we felt were far too industry friendly and not stringent enough in regards to environmental regulations. We, uh, we looked into whether that was a possibility and it turns out that two provisions in California law provide for it. There's the home rule provision that allows uh, municipalities to have broad control over industrial activities and the initiative process that I mentioned before. 
So on June 6th, our organization was formed. Right? And this is, we're approaching our first birthday. We're pretty proud of all, the we, all, all that San Benito has risen. Uh, on February 27th, we filed our initiative. Um, on March 21st, County Council released their neutral title and summary. On March 22nd, we started collecting signatures. And we actually got enough signatures to qualify for the ballot in record-breaking time. Um, we had enough signatures by April 6th, about 12 days after we started. April 22nd, each um, on Earth Day, we filed our petitions. And on April 28th, our signatures were certified. I still have one minute. Is that no, correct? No, that's, uh, that's a wrap. Okay, I'm sorry, so Andy. at any rate. Your statement. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Armin, why is this a bad initiative? I'm going to try to do a better job of actually addressing that question. I'm not going to talk to you much about why initiatives are good or bad. I do think that initiatives are a great part of our, uh, you know, government process. That said, this initiative specifically is bad because it's been disguised as an initiative to stop one thing and, in fact, encompasses many other things. My project does not involve fracking. It's not anywhere near Pro uh, Pinnacle's National Monument. And, uh, you know, I'm still going to suffer as a project manager and my company will not be able to pursue a project that has nothing to do with fracking whatsoever because this initiative encompasses, like you mentioned earlier, many different techniques such as steam injection and any other sort of stimulation. Now, my project specifically is using steam injection, which is just putting hot water into the formation to reduce the viscosity of oil and bring it to the surface. Very similar uh, and exactly the same in many ways to what they're already doing at San Ardo Oil Field, which at San Ardo, San Ardo Oil Field, there's already been 3,000 wells drilled. The Salinas River cuts right through the center of that oil field. And from the downflow of that river, there's $4.1 billion of agriculture every year that comes off of that flow. So to say that agriculture and the oil and gas industry can't coexist in both thrive together is ridiculous. San Ardo Field also has a desalinization and RO system which actually contributes clean water from what was previously produced salt water to the Salinas River. So in fact we're assisting as an industry in this drought situation. So uh, to have companies like my own, Citadel Exploration, suffer because of an initiative like this that's been disguised as an anti-fracking campaign is immoral, and I believe that this has all been a ruse. Okay. All right, uh, Andy, you well, have a three-minute rebuttal. To that. Sure. I appreciate uh, Armin's comments, though I don't appreciate it being characterized as a ruse, since our initiative very clearly says exactly what it does. It bans uh, hydraulic fracturing, it bans acidization, and it bans cyclic steam injection, and there's no pretense about that. Um, it says it in the uh, neutral title and summary, and it says it in the body of the initiative. Now, um, Armin says that he appreciates the initiative process, and yet lawyers representing the oil and gas industry on April 14th sent a letter to county council basically telling them that if this initiative passes, they would be suing the county of uh, San Benito. So to me, that's not exactly honoring the initiative process. Um, as a matter of fact, they, they uh, originally sent this before during the negotiations over the ordinance, and I think that very much ca colored the negotiations around the ordinance. And by the way, the environmental group that was involved in that, Natural Resource Defense Council, has endorsed our initiative. So as to uh, safe um, cyclic steam injection, I would argue that actually cyclic steam injection may be the most dangerous of the three. And the reason it's the most dangerous of the three is because essentially it is the uh, nose of the camel underneath the tent that you get in just a little way and pretty soon the whole camel's in there. And uh, a good analogy would be, and when I was growing up, they used to talk about marijuana as a gateway drug. Well, I would argue that cyclic steam is a gateway fracking technique. Essentially, although it does not use large amounts of chemicals like the other, like the other approaches, it does end up under pressure 
pumping up what they call norms, normally occurring radioactive materials, as well as heavy metals, as well as other contaminants down below. And that comes up in what they're calling produced water, which is a nice euphemism, because as Armin knows, the only way you can produce water is by essentially burning hydrocarbons or carbohydrates. That's how water gets produced. I used to be a chemistry teacher. So, uh, so this is not produced water, it's contaminated water. And Armin told us in the uh, hearing at the San Juan City Council that you are capable of cleaning this up. So I'd like to know if Armin promises to clean up all of this water to drinking level standards. Thank you, Andy. Armin? Well, that's very interesting. Um, produced water, uh, in fact, is produced with oil. There's water underground just about everywhere you go, and water does not often sit in solitude. Oftentimes, there's a little bit of water that's conate in the formation that's there. And when you produce gross fluid, let's say 100 barrels of fluid, it may have a certain cut of oil and produced water that's groundwater. That groundwater is sometimes saline. You have higher salt levels than others. You have more total dissolved solids. But it's naturally that way underground. So when I bring it to the surface, we simply mechanically separate it using gravity. Oil floats on top of water. And then you can take that produced water and run it through a desalinization system and an RO unit, put it into stock ponds like they've done at San Ardo, where they now have natural ponds for ducks to land in. And like I said, that water is cleaner than the water that's already running through the Salinas River, and they feed that. So to try to stifle uh, something that's just a steam injection project on the basis of dirty water is uh, just a total waste of time. Now, what this initiative does is it defeats economic growth in the county of San Benito, which is something that the county needs. We're trying to bring jobs. We've already spent near a half a million dollars with a single well that we've drilled through to date, and we look forward to bringing prosperity to this area. I've, in the last seven and a half years that I've permitted this project, become a great fan of the area. I would love to bring my family here, and it's not something that I have any intent of ever fouling. Uh, oil and gas operators today operate in an environmentally conscientious way. Uh, especially here in California, we already have the highest degrees of rules and regulations in place. I worked aggressively with the County of San Benito to establish a new drilling and production ordinance. I spent well over a year and a half of my time doing that. And I think that we came to the table with something that still made San Benito County one of the more uh, difficult places to operate because of all of the conditions that we have to meet. But at the same time, I feel comfortable knowing that we've now set a precedence for the rest of California to follow here, and we're happy to do that. Citadel has always been committed to a cleaner and uh, better way of producing oil, so that's what we'll continue to do here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Armin. All right, Andy, you have uh, a minute for your concluding statements. Well, uh, um, Armin's comments reminded me of one of those commercials, Think About It, and I think that th people should think about it with all their brains. Uh, I have a great deal of respect uh, for people like Armand who shoulder the enormous burdens of two perhaps unnecessary wars over the last 13 years. Armand's a veteran. He talked to us at the San Benito, excuse me, the San Juan Council about the choice we have, that we can either kill over there or drill over here. And uh, I'm glad that you didn't say that we are over there to uh, spread democracy because it is clear from your company's legal threats against San Benito County, if our people pass this citizen's initiative, that you have contempt for democracy and for the right of the people to petition grievance that is enshrined in the First Amendment to the Constitution and that you sworn oath to protect. Okay, okay, I have to put you to stop there. Yeah. Okay, so the minute is concluded, okay? And your, your concluding uh, statements. Just, yeah, uh, really quickly to address the issue of the letter that was sent to the county, that was from a group called SIPA, which we're not a member of. Uh, that's the California Independent Producers Association. I've spoken to all the different county members, uh, supervisors and everybody, and I don't think that there's anybody that's gonna endorse this initiative whole or in part. I'm very comfortable with uh, the position that they have, and I also don't believe it to be legal. As written, uh, it'd be just the same as saying, we don't want Armenian last name workers to be here in San Benito County, as I see it to be no different. So uh, I appreciate the time that you guys have given me today. I think that this is a great venue. Andy, thank you very much for your time thank here. You. David, thank, thank, thank you very you. much thank for having you, us. David. Thank you. Thank very you, much Andy. appreciated. I really appreciate you guys coming on our show. And for the viewers, you've heard what Andy has said, and you've heard what Armand has said. And there's going to be a lot of discussion in the future for you to make an informed decision. Thank you for watching Going Green. We'll see you next time.